Drawing inferences using data. What this means is that data tells us information. So just like in language arts, an inference means that you think about the information and process your own thoughts about it based on the information given throughout the data. If you were in English language arts, it would be based on what you have read from the passage. So sort of the same, except you're not reading a passage, you are reading data. So let's read about it. Stefania wonders how much time students at her school spend playing video games. Stefania and her sister Helena attend the same school. Helena loves video games. If Helena surveys 10 of her closest friends about how much time they spend playing video games, do you think that the, that survey would be representative of all the students at their school? Explain your answer. So we have covered this and talked about this before. The issue with this one would be the fact that she is limiting her data. Her closest friends probably have the same interests or similar interests as she does. So it would not be representative. So this would be a biased survey. It is limited to only her friends. which probably has the same interests or similar interests. If you need to pause to write that down or if you need to pause to type that, please do so. We're gonna go on to number two. Stefania uses an app to randomly choose 30 students at her school to survey. That is a much better choice. In the survey, she asks each student how many hours they spend playing video games each week. Below is a table showing Stefania's survey data. Make a dot plot of the data using their number line below. The first dot has been placed for you. All right, so now we have to start compiling this data. They've already done eight for me, and I'm gonna be obnoxious and go ahead and change the color so that it matches. So I'm going to put a dot at 1, a dot at 10, a dot at 6, a dot at 2, a dot at 7, a dot at 2, a dot at 5, a dot at 5. I want you to notice that I am crossing out the numbers as I plot them so that I make sure I get each and every one. As many times as I have taught that, that has been the mistake, is that students miss a number when they are plotting. See, I even managed to talk while I plotted. For a moment, at least. Somebody doesn't play any. Okay, now I'm going to double check my numbers. There are one, two, three, four, five columns of six, so there should be 30. And I do have 30, so I did it correct. All right, so that is our dot plot. I know that the other two questions are on the back and they are asking what the median and the range is. So because I need to see the page, I am going to write in a different color. Do you have to do this? No. Um, but since I need to see the data, you guys can flip a page back and forth and back and forth. So our range goes from 10 to one. So that would be our biggest number minus our smallest number. Our range is 10. But the median, I have to count. So I have 30 total. 
So if I'm splitting 30 in half, that means I have 15 on one side and 15 on the other. So now I have to count these. One, well, where's my pin? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So my median would be right there. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that means I need to take the both of those numbers divided by two, since mine was an even number. Um, it's between five and five. So that is five plus five divided by two equals five. So now that you have this, you can put your median there and your range is 10. Now we have to start thinking about it. What inferences can you make about how much time students at Stefania's school play video school play video games? You can use the median and range to help draw your inferences. Well, if the median is five, I can infer that most kids play around five hours a week. What else can you infer? I can infer that some kids play less than five, others play more than five. So basically looking at that data, you can kind of see how that works. Uh, I'll push pause so that you can write if you need to, but I want to look at the data for a minute. It looks like it's pretty evenly distributed. Um, if you look at your dots, the little blue dots, they are all about the same range. They're about three, there's a couple of twos, there's only one one, and a couple of fours. Um, so that mean or that average, well, not average, but the, the consistency of the middle is about five hours. All right, so now we're going to look at the other dot plot that's already created. Stefania's best friend, Andre, attends the same school. He uses a computer list to generate the names of all students at the school in random order. Andre chooses the first 30 students on the list and asks them how many hours they spend playing video games each week. Are Stefania's and Andre's surveys likely to be representative of students at their school? Why or why not? Since both surveys are random and should show representative sample. I should say it, or they, they. So here is his data, and he's using a box plot. We used a dot plot, I think. Yeah, we did a dot plot, he's doing a box plot, which if we haven't got to, we will get to. But what we need to know is this is the median. This is our smallest number. This is our largest number. Um, and so we can determine the median because it's right there, it's at six. And the range will be from our largest number, 12, minus 1, which is 11. So the, they now want us to kind of infer and understand some things about this. The medium and the range of Stefania's data are different from the median and range of Andre's data. Explain how this can happen, even though the surveys were randomly given to students from the same school. Well, I know that during school we did some um, examples of spinning a spinner. Um, and in theory, so the theoretical probability would be that it happens a certain way. But when you perform the experiment, the experiment is not always going to match perfectly. To make it match better, you need to take a bigger sample um, of the data subjects. So our answer to that will be they 
Well, I don't like Because the data is done randomly, the experimental data can be different. You would need more experiments for more reliable data. All right, that should be all. Um, make sure that you have done everything that you're supposed to do in order to turn this in and show that you have completed and understood the lesson.